So this afternoon you played at uh, Tros Music Cafe, and yep. uh, it was an acoustic show, eh? Because at uh, yeah. at this moment your uh, uh, your music is more like singer-songwriter material. Yeah, I mean actually, I think my music has always been uh, singer-songwriter, but it, it was singer-songwriter mixed up with with blues. Yeah. And and um, I guess now I'm trying to just focus it all in a little bit more so that it's a bit more coherent. So it's like one thing. But I think there's a bit of a misconception that. Oh, Ian Parker's music is going to change to something completely different because mm -hmm. it, it's it's not true. I mean, uh, I, at the moment, I mean, right now, this I'm here in Holland and, and Belgium next week, and I'm here with uh, with with my drummer Wayne, and he's playing percussion and I'm playing acoustic guitar. It's just I've been doing this thing that I've been calling the Up Close and Intimate Tour, which has just been a series of concerts, mainly in the UK actually, where I've been doing some solo gigs all of these years. I've always just played with a band and never solo, and I just wanted to try it for fun, you know. And it was—it's been great, and to try out new songs. And I also did something with an acoustic trio, as I was calling it, which was um, a double bass player and another guitarist, which was uh, really cool. And then this is the final stage, which is just me and, and Wayne on percussion. So it, it, it's just fun. I'm learning more about uh, my new material and learning stuff about my old material by doing the songs in this way. But actually, when I'm coming back to, to the Netherlands in December with the full band, and we're going to be playing songs that I always played, and we're going to play new ones as well. Oh, the, the Ian Parker band still exists? Yeah, I think the, there's this misconception that I've stopped playing, and, and it's not, not true at all. It's just that I, I, needed, I needed a break, I'll be honest. You know, I, I'd spent the last 10 or 12 years relentlessly touring, and um, I was a bit tired, but also... You, you know, artistically, you lose your way. You, don't, you need to stop sometimes and have a... My manager, he said to me a few, you know, some time back about the importance of putting the music first. And sometimes when you're on the road, it, and it, it becomes a business, you know, and you you have a job, you have to go there, you have to do this, you have responsibilities, and you can actually forget the music can actually get put to the side sometimes. And I needed to go back and say, right, what have I achieved so far? Where where am I up to as a musician? And where, how can I? improve from here rather than just keep repeating myself and just keep carrying on in the same way so that's what I've been doing and I've been trying out new ideas but I think when people see me with the band in December they will realize that it's a little bit different because it's it's you know a new a new stage and hopefully a development yeah. but it's not like a, a revolution in terms of my music it's just a natural progression you know Okay, I decided I'm going to stop playing like the blues covers now. Yeah. But there's still blues in my music. There always is. But but, but you've never been part of the blues scene, eh? I don't think so. I think people, you know, people think I have, or they say that sometimes people say, "Oh, Ian Park is a blues musician," and I don't mind that because I love the blues. But but mm -hmm. I just I'm also a songwriter. I mean, I grew my my first love was the Beatles. You know, yeah. I went from the Beatles to Hendrix, Clapton. Then I did go into like the old blues. Thing. Everybody's influenced by the Beatles. Is there a we, yeah. Which we, well, yeah, exactly. But I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm. I mean, I love, I love the blues so much. Mm -hmm. I really do. It's in my, it's genuinely in my heart, you know, because I grew up listening to it and it means a lot to me. But you know, I'm not, I'm not um, a black guy from Mississippi. You know, I'm, I'm from Birmingham in England, and, mm -hmm. and I'm equally in, grew up listening to pop music from the 60s and 70s I lost in I didn't have any interest in 80s pop music but like I grew up listening to that kind of thing and 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 so my music is a mixture of all of those things yeah. rather than being a, I, I'm not strictly a blues artist that's true but I'll always play uh, elements but, but is this the place uh, your last album your complete album because there's now a new EP coming out but there was also uh, where I belong the album is this yeah. a place where you belong is this a place where you belong here at the Highlands Festival I you know, I, I, I went through a period of analysing this situation. Or, where, where, oh, is it okay if I take my music to here or to here to a blues festival or to a jazz festival or, or to you know to go on tour uh, with with a band that's a mainstream act or, or whatever? And in the end, it, you, you can drive yourself crazy with that. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm here because uh, you know Hank Hank Hack. You know, he's, I think he's a very open-minded promoter, and I think he just he just promotes music that he thinks is good music really i know music by the heart. Uh, yeah and i and i know that um you know highlands is it's a it's a blues festival really you know but but yeah. hank is open-minded and i think a lot of listeners i've learned in the last 12 to 18 months that the listeners are actually much more open-minded than 
perhaps I thought they were. I was a bit scared if I tried something that, if, you know, when I tried my acoustic shows, mm -hmm. maybe it's not going to work. But you know, people are they just if you if you if you commit yourself to the music and you play it from the heart and you mean it, I think that I think people are into that. You know, okay. obviously there are some people that that are they they really just love blues guitar, for example. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. So maybe those people would rather I just play blues guitar. But I think the majority of people just want to hear someone playing music and, and meaning it, really. It's about meaning. That's yeah. what it's all about. And and spoke about your acoustic shows. This idea started in England, and uh, but but you also toured in America last year. Well, the thing about uh, the American, thing, I'd started doing um, this acoustic trio in the UK. Yeah. I did some shows and that was fun. And then I had an offer from a festival in the Midwest in America. They phoned up and said, would you like to come over and, and um, uh, play in an acoustic um, tent? They you know, have like a, an outside stage like you have here. And then they have this uh, acoustic tent, which is quite big. It's about a thousand people capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and they put, you know, obviously acoustic music in there. Would you like to come and do it? come over and be the headline on the Saturday night, but on your own. And I, and I, I said, well, why not? Well, I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to, but I'm really scared of that. You know, I'd never <laughs> played on my own ever in all these years, you know. That was the first time. So I kind of, it was a bit stupid or maybe, well, maybe stupid. I don't know. It, it worked out okay, but I, it was a bit, I, I, I just said, yeah, okay. And yeah. then put the phone down and thought, oh God, I, how am I going to do that? You know, yeah. I don't know how to, I don't really know how to do this. And I got there and I was really nervous and I couldn't sleep the night before. <laughs> and, the, and, and and that night at the festival, it rained just when I was about to play, so which which meant that everyone who was outside all crammed into this tent, you know, so it was totally full. And then I, I have to go out and play on my own, you know. You played on but, your own. It was, it, that show wasn't with, with Wayne. No, that was completely solo. Just yeah. me and the guitar, yeah, yeah. you know, acoustic guitar. But I got, you know, and I'm scared, really scared. But I went out and I played, and uh, I got the response I got was it was it really melted my heart, really. You know, it's just like oh, this is so lovely. I'd been to that festival before with a band, yeah. so some of the people knew me and knew my music, so they were supportive. And then that was, con I guess, a bit contagious, and everyone else in the audience responded. And I thought it was a, a really big buzz because it's very rewarding if you think that you're going out and you're taking, you're really um, stripping away. The music to, to, to the bare essentials of just sending, strumming the guitar and singing the song, and for them to still respond positively. Perhaps was, it's, it, like, it felt like uh, getting naked. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was because it was it was as scary as getting naked in front of a thousand people. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was it was it, I was worried about it, but then it was such a relief that it went well, and it just you know, and I start to think I, I've not given audiences enough credit. I've imagined that they well they only come to uh, shows because they want to hear. X or, or Y or whatever, yeah. but you know, I, like I say, I think the, the point is if you go out and you play with conviction, I think most people that, that are music lovers can appreciate that. You know, they may not like your style or they may like your style, but if they can appreciate that if you mean it and you, you're committing yourself to the song, you know, every time, that's okay. Being committed. How did the, how did the band respond to this idea? Because now you're here only with Wayne, but, but uh, the other band members, how did they respond? Because yeah. the band still exists, eh? Yeah, it does. I, you know, I mean, actually, we've always, the situation has always been that technically I, I'm a, a solo artist, you know, yeah. and those, and the band, they're session musicians, actually, and they work with other people all the time. They do recording sessions or if, you know, if I'm not playing, they'll go on tours with other people. But, you know, I've been very fortunate to have a band that's been very committed. So actually, even though technically they're session players, I'm a solo artist, yeah. I've had the same musicians for years, you know. Mm -hmm because we've always been doing lots of tours there's you know always gigs to go and play yeah. and, and we all you know we, we work well together yeah. so it's felt like a band which is nice really um, nice for, for, for me and for them in that we both they have the freedom to work with other people I have to want to try something new it's not not cool. you know no problem it's it's fine but they're always there and then it's I'm looking forward it's been nice to have a break and do something different but I think all of this experience in the last year or so when I go back with the band now I think it will be a positive influence on the band yeah. because you know when you do like 150 shows a year with this, the same band playing more or less the same show with slight variation because throughout the whole year you still have some nights that are very um, uh, um, spontaneous and exciting but obviously it, it becomes a bit routine I think that's natural you know because everyone you know it's it's too easy to just go oh, okay we know we know what to do here we'll do that but I think now it's going to be more exciting you know I'm, I think it's going to be going to be great what, what kind of